Good morning, everybody. Today we're looking at a 2008 Acura MDX. The, the brake uh, reservoir uh, light came on. It was low on brake fluid, and I looked, and man, that reservoir was near empty. It was kind of scary. And on further investigation, we can see all this leaking in here. You can kind of see how this whole area is kind of wet with brake fluid. So uh, anyway, I kind of uh, looked at the local auto parts store, and it's going to cost me, you know, at least $120 to get a remanufactured brake uh, caliper. So I'm going to see what I can do about rebuilding this myself. We can see where the brake line comes in from the body and connects here. And this is a 14 millimeter wrench. And so I've got a, a little pan underneath here. I remove the brake pads because uh, uh, brake fluid getting on brake pads will kind of ruin them. And uh, anyway, the idea is, is we'll take this hose out, let the, the old brake fluid uh, drain out. And of course, it's always good to replace brake fluid. There's nothing wrong with uh, losing a bunch of it. It's cheap to buy it. And then we'll take this thing off. And that's really the only connection. Just to show you what's going on, here's the brake fluid line. You can see there's a, a little washer that goes on in there and uh, kind of a very interesting kind of a hollow bolt there. And uh, there wasn't that much brake fluid in there. Most of that came from the caliper itself and not the line, but uh, it's okay if it drips out. We just got to make sure we wipe up everything before uh, we put everything back together. Okay, here we have our caliper kit. Turn over and show it to you. And here's the caliper. See the caliper kit? Seems to have two dust seals, two uh, square seals, and two pieces of two metal locking rings. And let's figure out how to do this now. Okay, well, uh, step one is we gotta remove uh, the pistons, the caliper pistons here. And uh, you can see I've uh, put a couple pieces of wood in here to limit the travel of the pistons so they uh, don't go flying out or damage anything. And then uh, the hole here that we had the, the brake line hooked up is right there. And I've got some compressed air. And of course, it's just got aluminum fitting on there, but I think I can still make this work. And I'm just gonna jam that thing in there and uh, try to uh, blow out the calipers. Okay. Oh, look at that. You put a little bit of air in there, and then the one piston's coming right out. Now the other one appears to be stuck. Huh. Well, there it goes. That, that worked. Okay, that's all it took. Here's the piston. This is the one that's leaking. I already wiped it off quite a bit, but this stuff's on there pretty hard. I, I started wiping it off and I go, well, maybe I better take a picture of it. It's really caked on there. I see a lot of leaking here. And it was the, obviously the one on the left side uh, that was leaking. Anyway, we're gonna take off the old seals, make sure everything looks nice and clean. I mean, luckily these pistons look beautiful. So I don't see any problems with these. I was kind of worried that I need to buy new pistons to really do this job right, but they look pretty good. Anyway, we'll get everything all cleaned off, replace, take off all the old seals, put new seals in there, put the pistons back on, and then we're done. I took out the old seals, and after I took the seal out, there's a ring in there, so you can see how the metal ring is inside here. I've had a little time to practice with this. Let me tell you what I did. Here's the old parts, and I've been playing around with the old parts, and I just wanted to make sure that I was really, really good at assembling this thing, and I had it in the right order. So let me tell you what the right order would be. Uh, when you're, uh, everything's all nice and clean, uh, I, I, uh, I got all wiped out, all the dirt's out of there. I'm really happy with how clean everything is now. And then we take the square seal and we put it in. And then we take the, the rubber boot and we put it on the end of the, the caliper as I have shown here. Now we have the, ca uh, the boot on the caliper, we slide it down, and then we put it in here. And then we have to insert it in the ridge. And, and I found a rotating helps. It's not all the way in there. Okay, there we go. So now you can kind of see it's in the ridge. And then we have the snap ring that goes in. It's like that. Oops. There it goes. It snapped in. So now it's all done. Of course. 
uh, uh, since I'm doing this for practice, I didn't have the, the rubber square seal in there because it would have been very, very tough to get out. But that's how it's going to go in real life. So let's give it a try. It, uh, once this thing's in here, you put the snap ring in, you can kind of see there's a little edge that catches. So this snap ring holds the, uh, the seal in tight. So anyway, that's a, a very tricky step. But it seems to, the way the tolerances are machined here, it seems to go right in if you, if you just snap it in. So uh, uh, here we are. Okay, now we're playing for real. We're going to use the real parts here. First thing we'll do is we'll take out the, the two square se er, seals. And then we got to lubricate them up with uh, brake fluid. By the way, rubber, you don't put any petroleum products on rubber. Never, ever, ever. You, you, the only thing that touches these things is brake fluid. And uh, I mean, they, they do make special greases for these things there, but it's kind of a real expensive compared to how cheap brake fluid is. But we're going to coat these things with uh, brake fluid, put a bunch of brake fluid in the actual uh, uh, hole, and then we're going to put these uh, babies in here. Here we got the two square seals in there, and they're, and they're nice and lubricated up. Now we're going to put the, the, the rubber dust seals uh, on the pistons, and uh, we'll, get those, uh, we'll get the pistons all lubricated up. And uh, we'll go on to step two. Okay, you can see I got one in. It was a struggle, but it's in. It's fully in. Now we got to get the, the second one here. And, and uh, it's a struggle, but let me kind of show you what I did. I kind of, uh, I, I got out towards about maybe half an inch out. And, and now we can get it to where it goes in. And then we have to rotate. We push it in. Then we rotate. Then we push it in. Then we rotate, because I mean you can't get your fingers in the back. Is the problem I'm having is you can't get your fingers in the back. So you push this thing in the groove in the front, and then you rotate it around to the back. Come on, get on in there. It's almost in. Okay, that's in. Still a little bit more. Last section. Oh, it's okay. Oh, okay. Well, okay, it's in there. Let's rotate it around, make sure everything's fully seated. Okay, well, then it's in there. Now we just put in the, the snap ring and we're all done. Pull it in. Okay, it's, I can feel it in the groove. Okay, good. And it's almost all the way in the groove. Now I just got to get this front part in. Okay, that snapped in. Okay, oh. there it goes. That snapped in. Now everything's all set. You just have to push this baby in. Maybe you'd have to use a C clamp, but I was able to push in with my fingers. Okay, we reattached the brake line to the caliper, the 14 millimeter ratchet, and made sure it was real tight. Now it's certainly just as tight as it would have been to take it off. You know, you know, very tight. But of course, it is a hollow bolt. You can snap it off if you go crazy. But I mean, real, still very tight. Clean everything off. Make sure there's no brake fluid anywhere. You know, because there was dripping brake fluid, and brake fluid's bad stuff when it comes to brake pads. So uh, you know, I use a whole bunch of paper towels and uh, get everything nice and clean. Okay, the caliper is reattached, and now we got to bleed the brakes because there's air in the lines, and we got to bleed the brakes. So. You can see the bleeder screw here. We take off this rubber uh, dust cap and keep it in a safe place. And then we're going to take a, a 10 millimeter wrench and use that for the bleeding. And there's a lot of different ways for bleeding brakes. I like the two person approach. So the way it works is okay, there's air. You, you, you uh, pump up the pedal very carefully, but make sure you don't go all the way down to the end and press because you can actually damage your master cylinder. But anyway, uh, uh, pump up your uh, your pedal until it gets hard, until you compress all the air. Then the person inside the car will say hard, and then I'll open the valve, and as I open up the valve, the pedal will go down, and as it goes down to, to near the bottom, the guy in the car will say bottom, and then I'll close the valve. And then, then I'll say closed. And then the guy in the car will take his foot off the, the, the brake pedal and then start pumping up again. So you keep on doing this until we get a good hard pedal. Now, uh, hopefully, there's just air in this one line and we won't have any problems. If you, if you read a service manual on doing brake bleeding, they suggest you always uh, bleed the longest line first, but you know, I've never really had to do that. 